Good evening, everyone. Good evening. To begin our <clears throat> celebration of the life of Louise Fitzpatrick, let us begin all things. Let us begin to be all things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the waters of baptism, Louise died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May she now share with him eternal glory. Let us pray. Almighty God and Father, it is our certain faith that your Son, who died on the cross, was raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. 
Grant that through this mystery, your servant Louise, who has gone to her rest in Christ, may share in the joy of his resurrection. And we ask this for, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Job. Job answered and said, Oh, would that my words were written down, would that they were inscribed in a record, that with an iron chisel and with lead they were cut in the rock forever. But as for me, I know that my vindicator lives and that he will at last stand forth upon the dust, whom I myself shall see. My own eyes, not another's, shall behold him. And from my flesh, I shall see God. My inmost being is consumed with longing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Shepherd me, O oh Shh. 
Surely your kindness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of my God forevermore. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For Christ, while we were still helpless, yet died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person? Though perhaps for a good person, one might even find the courage to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. How much more then, since we are now justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath. Indeed, if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, how much more, once reconciled, will we be saved by his life? Not only that, but we also boast of God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. 
Jesus said to his disciples, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne and all the nations shall be assembled before him. And he will separate them one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. A stranger and you welcomed me. Naked and you clothed me. Ill and you cared for me in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? The king will say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, Whatever you did for one of these least brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you accursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. A stranger, and you gave me no welcome. Naked, and you gave me no clothing, ill and in prison, and you did not care for me. Then they will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or ill or in prison and not minister to your needs? He will answer them, Amen, I say to you, what you did not do for one of these least ones, you did not do for me. And these will go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous in eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Louise Fitzpatrick had three families. She had her parents, Bettina and John, and her cousins. Then she had the College of Nursing and its staff and faculty to whom she was devoted. And then there were the Augustinians and the Augustinian Order to whom she was affiliated. She loved all three of her families. And I know that even when she was in the ICU unit, she told the attending nurse, please tell everybody I love them. But I know, in particular, she would be especially pleased that so many Augustinian friars are here this evening to celebrate her life and this Mass of the Resurrection. She was, in every sense, our sister in Augustine. <clears throat> the reading from Matthew we just heard gives us a beautiful imaginative scene that depicts the core of Jesus' moral teaching. Jesus is introduced as a king and a judge, but he identifies himself not with power and majesty, but with the deprived and the downtrodden. He makes clear that the supreme law of love will be the measure by which we are judged. And Matthew's Gospel brings to mind the article <clears throat> that Louise wrote for the spring 2017 issue of the Villanova Nursing Magazine, which was in celebration of the 175th anniversary of the university. And although this article <clears throat> was to be Louise's last perspective on the college that she led for the last 40 years, it is really a fitting statement not only to the college's 64-year history, but also 
to its future challenges. As if answering the question posed to the just judge in the gospel, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, a stranger, naked, or in prison? Or to add perhaps some more contemporary terms, when did we see you disabled, marginalized, diverse, a migrant, a refugee, see you trafficked, a victim of drug abuse, in need of health care and in education. Louise answered these questions by reminding us of what the College of Nursing has done during her tenure to address these crises. She wrote, our college has epitomized the service ideal of the Villanova community through its activities locally and globally. Our college has sent its faculty and students into diverse communities to learn and improve the care of others by providing critical health services to those who need them. Our college has given special attention to the needs of people with disabilities. Our college has produced a significant number of leaders for the profession in education, clinical practice, research, the military, and internationally. Our college has expressed the mission of Villanova in tangible ways that are rooted in the essential elements of a Catholic Augustinian tradition. We are an integral part of Villanova University. Louise will not have to ask, Lord, when did we see you hungry, thirsty, a stranger, and in need? She and the College of Nursing know that whatever you did for one of these least sisters and brothers of mine, you did it for me. Louise was a consummate academic who, with her excellent faculty and staff, transformed the College of Nursing into one of the premier programs in the nation. When she became dean in 1978, the college offered one degree, the BSN. It now offers master's degrees and several, has several academic centers and programs and the PhD. As she noted in her report, through its PhD program, the nursing college has helped the university attain status as a national doctoral institution. And so if anyone is to be considered the second founder of the College of Nursing, the dean who reviewed and developed it into its current prominence, Louise Fitzpatrick is that person. Louise also loved her church. And to say that she was a committed Catholic would be an understatement. However, there was another perhaps ecumenical side to her that should be noted. She mentioned frequently that she was a very proud product of public schools. She studied nursing at Johns Hopkins, received the BSN from the Catholic University of America, and earned graduate degrees in the and a doctorate from Columbia University. Louise became a member of the faculty at Columbia and was so proud of her Columbia degree that she gave instructions. Actually, she mentioned this so many times that she should be buried in her Columbia academic robe. <laughs> As a young girl, she learned her favorite hymns from the local Protestant church. And whenever she needed to give a prayer, she commissioned one of her Protestant faculty members to compose it because, she said, they did it best. <laughs> she loved and defended her Muslim Omani students, particularly after the tragedy of 9-11, when some of them were subjected to harassment at the local grocery store. She got wind of this, got in her car, drove to the store, saw the manager, and said, you better take care of this and not happen again. She was no feminist, but she was pro-woman. And she definitely had a unique theological outlook. 
Louise was fond of telling people that during a meeting she had with Father Larry Gallen, the then Vice President for Academic Affairs, of whom she was very, very fond, he once was moved to say, Louise, your faith is great, but your theology is lousy. <laughs> In a soon-to-be-released book, <clears throat> Pope Francis reveals that he had undergone counseling from a psychoanalyst some 40 years ago during the time of the military dictatorship in Argentina when people were, quote, disappeared and killed, including some of his own priests and nuns. He related that the psychoanalyst, a woman, called him when she was close to dying, not to receive the sacraments, he said, since she was Jewish, but for spiritual dialogue. Francis said that he was enriched by being in contact with women. Women see things differently from men, he said. It is important to listen to both. As in so many things, this Pope, this Francis, was giving us a new paradigm that reminded me of Louise, who for almost four decades was the only woman to sit on the Council of Deans. Her perspectives were important. She was clear. She was very forceful. She was insightful. And everyone listened. <laughs> Louise's last days were spent in dignity. Having battled cancer for three years, she would not give in to it. She told her doctors, never, ever tell me there was nothing more you can do for me. I have people all over the world praying for me, Muslims, Christians, and Jews, she's declared. And I want you to pray for me, too. Soon after she became ill, Father Rob Hagen gave her the Villanova bracelet worn by the basketball team with the word, believe, inscribed on it. The V in believe was uppercase for Villanova. I asked him about it. I said, what, what was her reaction? What did she have to say about it? He said she found great strength and consolation in remembering that she too was part of a team, the community, the body of Christ, and her students, colleagues, friends, and Augustinians were with her through whatever she had to face. She believed this, found strength and consolation in this, and loved wearing the bracelet. In fact, she never took it off until her arm became so swollen that it had to be removed. But it was not cut. It was removed whole because she believed that as soon as she could, she would wear it again. In her last weeks, Louise seemed to know that she had beaten the odds once too often. She fought every setback, every bad diagnosis, until finally, finally her body could take no more. Being with her, you could not help admiring that same determination which characterized her and kept her alert and responsive until the very last day of her life. And so, Job's words that we heard in the first reading, I think, epitomized Louise. Oh, would that my words were written down. Would that they were inscribed in a record, that with an iron chisel and with lead they were cut in the rock forever. But as for me, I know that my vindicator lives. As her family, the Villanova community, and the Augustinians contemplate Louise's death, I know that her life will be a record cut in rock for us. We thank God for the gift of her life and for the reward of eternal life he gave her on September 1st. That we have come to mourn, that you have come to mourn with us it, to celebrate her life is appreciated all the more. Each of us 
remembers our loved ones in our hearts. And as long as we allow it, they will continue to live there in us. And so we pray for Louise, but also for each of us and for all our loved ones who have departed. May they rest in God's peace and in our love. Amen. With great confidence in God's love and mercy, let us offer our prayers for Louise, for her family and friends, and for all those in need. Louise received the light of Christ in baptism. Scatter the darkness once again and lead her over the waters of death to eternal life. In your mercy, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Faithfully throughout her life, Louise was nourished at the table of the Eucharist. May she rejoice now at your heavenly banquet. In the company of the saints, in your mercy we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Louise loved nursing. She spent almost four decades as a dean of the Villanova University College of Nursing. May all who serve as nurses, especially Villanova alumni, carry forward her legacy of confidence and compassion, fully committed to bettering the lives of patients and the community. In your mercy, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Louise enjoyed a good-natured sense of humor. May those who know her be inspired by her spirit and lightheartedness, especially in times of sadness and loss. In your mercy, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. May all those who care for the sick and dying, especially those who serve in palliative care and hospice ministry, be blessed with patience kindness, integrity, and generosity. In your mercy, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We celebrate with Louise as she is reunited with her parents, John and Bettina, and with family and friends who have gone before her, especially Father John Driscoll, Father Lawrence Gallen, Father Edmund Dobbin, all deceased Augustinians, and all deceased members of the College of Nursing and Villanova community. In your mercy, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our faculty, staff, students, benefactors, and friends who have helped us to maintain the continued prosperity of the College of Nursing and for Villanova University, that it may continue to endure as a scholarly community of service and faith. In your mercy, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Jesus wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. May the sadness we feel as we say goodbye to Louise be softened by our faith in the, in the resurrection until we all meet again in heaven. In your mercy, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, our shelter and strength, you always listen to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer today and bring us all at last to your heavenly kingdom as we pray in the name of Jesus, your son. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, be so graciously on us, we pray, the gift of unity and peace in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Lift up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him, the hope of a uh, blessed resurrection has dawned, <clears throat> that those saddened by the certainty of dying <clears throat> might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And, by the when, and when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominations, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as at our end we acclaim. we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and until willingly into his passion, he took bread. And giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring here to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Charles, our Bishop, and all the religious and clergy. Remember also your servant, Louise, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, 
with St. Augustine and St. Thomas of Villanova and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by the divine teaching, we dare to say. Lord, we pray from every evil. Gracious to grant peace in our days and by the help of your mercy, we be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins by the faith of your church, and gracious to grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other a sign of Christ's peace.
of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
thing we have, Father Peter, here. <laughs> so let us pray. God of holiness and power, accept our prayers on behalf of your servant, Louise. Do not count our deeds against her, for in her heart she desired to do your will. As her faith united her to your people on earth, so may your mercy join her to the angels in heaven. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Once again, on behalf of all of Louise's families, thank you for being here and thank you for the support that you have given to her over the last several years as she battled against cancer. Uh, as many of you probably know, there were very specific instructions left about what was to happen, who was to say what and when. And um, at this point, we would like to share a few memories of Louise. And after this is over, uh, we invite everybody to Driscoll Hall, her home away from home, uh, for a celebration of her life. Uh, Debbie Fickler, who is the Vice President and General Counsel here, sent me an email recently saying we should all have a drink and share a Louise story. So uh, you're all welcome to have a drink and share a Louise story. But we'd like to take this time to share a couple memories of Louise. And first and foremost, I'd like to introduce Madeline Bell. Madeline has many titles, but her favorite one is she's a graduate of Villanova's Nursing College. Ten days ago, I got a call from Mary Alice Morrow. She graduated with me in 1983 from the College of Nursing, and she serves with me on the College of Nursing Board of Consultors, or as we know it as Louise's Board. Mary Alice told me that she had just gotten off the phone with Dean Fitzpatrick, and she wanted to update me on the conversation. She told me that Louise had a goal, she wanted to get better so that she could be part of the 175th anniversary celebration next year. And it was so like Dean Fitzpatrick. She always had a goal. In fact, Dean Fitzpatrick had many goals, and so many of the people in this room are here this evening because we were inspired by her goals. I'm honored to be speaking on behalf of Louise's board and on behalf of our very distinguished College of Nursing alumni. We've always been Dean Fitzpatrick's disciples. Oftentimes, we were called her children, and we grew into her colleagues and then her trusted advisors. When I think of Dean Fitzpatrick, I think of the word pride. She beamed with pride whenever she witnessed any one of us, her students or alumni, with any achievement. I recall more than one time looking out at the audience and see her beaming at me, my mother on one side and Dean Fitzpatrick on the other. She was the only dean of the College of Nursing that I've ever known. And I said, children, it's because I met her when I was 18 years old, like many people here. And then 38 years later, she was still my dean. Amazing. I often hold Louise up as an example of good leadership. Her vision kept this College of Nursing fresh, innovative, and cutting edge. She did not rest on her laurels. She raised the bar on herself, and she kept the College of Nursing nationally ranked because of it. Her tenure did not matter, her age did not matter, her health did not matter. She was always driven. I cannot tell you how many times I would run into the dean in the midst of her health trials, and she would say to me, oh, I just got back from Oman, and next week I'm speaking at a national conference. Um, we all had so much trouble keeping up with her, me included. She was a great strategist, a visionary, and she had a knack for having us all follow her. In fact, Louise just had a way of getting what she wanted. 
There are so many stories to share on that front, but I remember one story in particular. I was about to receive an honorary degree from Villanova. It was truly the highlight of my career, and Louise was so proud. I received in a letter and a mail from Father Peter saying that I would receive a doctorate in medical science. But when Louise found out, she wouldn't have it. She told Father Peter that nurses did not want a degree in medicine. <laughs> so at another gathering, Father Peter pulled me aside and said, I have to change that degree to honorary, uh, uh, honorary degree in humane letters. You know Louise. <laughs> in other words, he was outmatched. <laughs> and I suspect that that was not the first time. But that tenacity is what made her such an incredible leader. When you think about someone's life, you think about impact. Let's just take a moment to think about the impact that Louise made in her life. All of the nurses that she trained who went on to become caregivers, scholars, and leaders. How many lives have they touched? Think of her own scholarship and leadership, and how many lives did she touch? She had exponential impact. Finally, Dean Fitzpatrick created a legacy, and she will continue to make impact well beyond today. Louise, we are grateful for all that you have taught us, and we will do our very best to continue to make you proud. I honestly didn't think Rose would need an introduction. Where are you, Rose? There you are. Rose O'Driscoll, no explanation needed. Thank you, Madeline. You did a fabulous job. So I'm not going to tell a lot of the things that she said, but I am going to thank, number one, the administration of the university for being so supportive of Louise, the staff, and the college. And also, especially in these last couple of weeks, uh, the staff and the faculty of the College of Nursing and the administrators of the College of Nursing have been superb. And I'm going to tell a story, because I shared it with Peter, and he said, oh, it's your story. You tell it. This week, I got a letter from an alum, and she offered her condolences, and then said, oh my, Mrs. O'Driscoll, she said, Raleigh died, and she said, and Louise died. They're storming the gates of heaven, <laughs> <laughs> and heaven will never be the same. So two legends of Villanova within one week. I just, again, wanted to thank you for, for coming to the celebration of her life. And as uh, Madeline alluded to, I know in the audience, because I've seen them, I was talking to a lot of them, we are internationally represented here by a, a lot of students, past graduates, uh, globally. So thank you again, and I'll see you at the reception. Finally, uh, I couldn't help, as uh, Father Kale was talking during his homily about Louise's article and how she kept saying, our college, our college, our college, our college. Um, I think most of the administration feared her when she started talking that way. So, um, <laughs> But there's so many stories you could tell about her and so many things that we could re remember about Louise and what she did for the College of Nursing. But I think sometimes we forget what she did for individuals. And I, as well, received an email from a 
alum of the nursing college. And rather than me talk about my memories of Louise, I'd like to share Stephanie Connor's memories of Louise. In celebration of Dean Fitzpatrick's life, I wanted to share with you my story. In 1989, I applied to Villanova. I was appropriately denied. This is where my story began. I grew up in West Philadelphia and went to a very small public school. My father and mother, neither who graduated high school, worked hard to provide for my sister and I. To that end, Villanova nursing was a dream for a girl like me. My dad, who was fortunate to get a job in security at Villanova, had a post at the front gate. As Dean Fitzpatrick entered the front gate, my dad asked if she, could, if she would meet me. She obliged. All I remember is walking on campus thinking I don't deserve any of what I saw. Then I met Dean Fitzpatrick, and she instantly showed me the possibilities. She encouraged me to try again. I promised her I would make her proud. With sheer excitement of the possibility, I did all that she suggested, and I was accepted when I reapplied. I felt so privileged and entered the nursing program in 1990. I indeed struggled through the program. However, with the support of Dean Fitzpatrick, Rose O'Driscoll, and others she surrounded me with, I made it. There were times I won't mention in this note that she would, could have certainly given up on me. She didn't. She gave me support in a way nobody ever knew. I graduated in 1993. That day was a moment that launched me into a life I, a life I never thought was possible. Many years later, I saw Dean Fitzpatrick during a national conference in which I was speaking. Dean Fitzpatrick approached me and asked if I was the same girl with, the, with a new last name. I smiled and said yes. It was a moment I will never forget. She le leaned in, gave me a big hug, and told me that I made her proud. Dean Fitzpatrick saw something in me that I never saw in myself. I am entirely grateful for the path she provided. I truly believe that I am all that I am because of her and my relationship with her. Dean Fitzpatrick will be forever in my heart. Sincerely, Stephanie Connors, Senior Executive Vice President, Chief Operating Officer, Chief Nurse, Cooper University Healthcare. And I think that's what we remember the most about Louise. She embodied everything that Villanova speaks about constantly. She looked after the individual. Let us continue to celebrate her life. Let us pray. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister, Louise. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself.
we commend the soul of Louise, your servant. In the sight of this world, she is now dead. In your sight, she lives forever. Forgive whatever sins she committed through human weakness, and in your goodness, grant her everlasting peace. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace now, let us take our sister to her place of rest. <laughs> 